Good evening, dear friends. In your body, as in mine, there is one muscle that you do not respect enough. You do not appreciate its work, but thanks to its efforts, every morning you get out of bed successfully and either go to the bathroom or in search of food, whatever. You don't think about the work it does every day, but it's thanks to it that you can stand, lean, walk, and as soon as even one of them, because there are two, right and left, muscle stops working, your life will change dramatically. What muscle is this? I can see the question already arising in your eyes. This is an underrated muscle because you value completely different muscles. Which ones? For men, for example, the biceps, the chest muscles are in the first place. They want to constantly train them because they want to demonstrate their strength, power, distance to the surrounding people. Women, of course, are more interested in training the gluteal muscles, which, from a health point of view, is also good. But no one says, look what a wonderful lumbar muscle I have. Look how I pumped it up. Look how I stretched it. Look how remarkable my lumbar muscle is. Despite the fact that it does a tremendous amount of work, as you've already guessed, we're talking about the lumbar muscle. And it is this muscle that does a tremendous amount of work, thanks to which we are now here and talking to you. If I didn't have a lumbar muscle, do you think I would be standing here in front of you like this? No, I would be standing like this. If my two lumbar muscles weren't working, do you think I would be standing like this? No, you're mistaken. I would be standing like this right now in front of you. And I would be walking too. Oh, yes. Because the muscle itself, look, the peculiarity of this muscle is that it consists of two parts of two muscles. From the lumbar muscle and from the subscapular muscle. The subscapular muscle, it starts from the subscapular bone. They have a common attachment point right here on the femur. There is such a tubercle here the greater trochanter, and to it are already attached by the common and the dry tendon. These two muscles join together and attach here with a common tendon. Thanks to this, one of the functions of this muscle, the common one, is to lift the leg up here. And if we fix the legs, like with a press, those who like to pump, along with the abdomen, the lower back and lumbar muscles always work for you. A full set of exercises, diagnostics, and recovery of your body, your muscles, is now available specifically for you at the link right here in the description. What goes in there? All exercises go in there, starting from the very tip of your longest hair, ending with your pinky toes. All exercises are broken down step by step for all muscles. How to train muscles, how to find out which ones work, which ones don't, changing the motor stereotype, how to learn to walk, stand, lie, sit correctly. All exercises are thoroughly explained. For three years, they all gathered together, and now they are finally ready for you to finally get off the couch and start doing them. They are already waiting for you, warm, at the link in the description. The peculiarity of the lumbar muscle is that it is attached to both the bodies of the vertebrae and the transverse processes, and also to the intervertebral discs. Therefore, with uneven stretching, for example, of this muscle, the intervertebral discs also begin to get injured. And the Achilles muscle, here it is right here, from the Achilles bone, here it protrudes from inside and goes down, here they connect. And because these two muscles are next to each other, there is a part here where they touch. These two neighboring muscles, in this place spikes often form, there can be a small inflammatory process and mobility is impaired. Why should you monitor the good condition of the iliopsoas muscle? First of all, any pain in the lower back, it participates in the formation of this pain. Changes in posture, scoliosis, especially where there is a twist of the vertebra, torsions, participate in this. 
Arthrosis of the sacroiliac joint is also not bypassed, either without its weakness or shortening, or simultaneous weakness and shortening. The sacroiliac joint, right here at the back, also participates in the stabilization of this joint from the inside. Externally, it is held by the gluteus maximus and internally by the iliopsoas muscle. Muscle is very important. The most interesting thing is that if at least one of the two muscles works, all the other muscles in the lumbar region will not work. Here are the spine flexors, the quadratus muscle in the lumbar region. But the lumbar muscle is more or less developed. Everything can hold on it. But if even one of them is not working, problems already start. When does it start moving for us? Most often we use it during a step, but there are cases when the muscle is too short. It tends to shorten in us because when we spend all day with you in a sitting position, when we sit with you all day, it is always in a shortened state for us. And then all day we sat with you like this, it was always shortened, we start to walk, it also can't stretch right away. If you sat for a long time, it can even get injured. The tendons can get injured. This part between the muscles can get injured. In general, the muscle, the most interesting thing, it is prone to both weakness and shortening at the same time. Therefore, in order to restore the correct position of the pelvis, to restore the tone of the gluteal muscles, because the gluteal muscle cannot work without it, to remove the risk of developing arthritis of the sacroiliac joint, or if it already exists, to more or less stabilize the joint, to stop the process. Maybe the reverse process of restoration can be initiated. What else can we do with its help? Can we fix the foundation? We can. Can we correct the position of the pelvis? We can. So it's easier to walk, run, jump. She's involved everywhere. So, friends, Today we will restore the lumbar pelvic muscle with you. At the same time, we will give it both load and stretch it, making it more elastic. Let's start with training this muscle. The simplest, the first exercise that you can start with is our lying training of the lumbar pelvic muscle with you. We lie down with you on our back, we lie and just from the lying position, we made our legs closer to each other. And from the lying position, you lift your leg up here. At the same time, your straight thigh muscle is working together with the sub-lumbar pelvic muscle. You've lifted and lowered it. For some, this will already be heavy, the weight of the leg. Because if the muscle is weak, it may not be able to hold the weight of the leg. On one side, you do it with movement. On the other side, for starters, you conduct such a test. Simultaneous exercises and testing. Here you may notice that the movement may be easier on one side. That is, it's easier to do it. With a different load, or it will be felt more. It will either tire faster. This indicates that the muscle tone differs, being stronger on one side and weaker on the other. If the load is already felt in such a position, Leave this exercise for about a week. Do it. Here you can do from 5 to 10 repetitions. The second position, you already put your legs wider to the width of the shoulders or a little wider and start to lift in this position. It will be a little more difficult here because the angle of movement changes. And if the lower back and hip muscle is weak, at the moment of lifting the leg, the opposite half of the pelvis will start to rise. Here are two points for you, the anterior and upper axis of the hip bone. If the right leg is here and the left leg is here, then this is the right point. If I, for example, lift my left leg and notice that my right point is lifting up here, this also speaks of the weakness of this muscle. If you notice such a thing, then you need to do this exercise with a cushion, for example, a small one. Take a cushion and put it not under the buttock but under the outer part of the gluteal muscle of the leg with which you will be doing the exercise. In this position, lift your leg and your pelvis will be stabilized. Over time, as the muscle becomes stronger, 
You will be able to do this movement without a cushion. Your pelvis will also be stabilized. That is, a sign of a more or less developed lumbar pelvic muscle is that it does not lift your pelvis at the moment when you lift your leg. Next, in the following stage, you spread your legs wider. Or, for example, if you lie on a cushion like I do and slightly move your left leg and take it out here even more and start lifting from this position, here it is desirable to put a cushion under your buttock. And from this position, you also start to lift your leg. This is the hardest position. The further you take your leg to the side, the harder the exercise will be. Because the peculiarity of the hip flexor muscle is that in everyday life, at the moment of leg extension forward, when we walk with you, the entire volume of this muscle participates in the movement mainly. If we take your leg to the side from here, here is our leg, then the upper part of this muscle is excluded from the movement and only this lower part starts to work. And it often happens that exactly this lower part of the hip flexor muscle weakens. It usually starts with the weakness of it because rarely does any movement occur at such an angle. That's why very often these lower vertebrae, they become unstable. The intervertebral discs of the fourth and fifth are overloaded. And with the help of this exercise, we can put stress on this lagging part of the lumbar gluteal muscle. Well, even more on the gluteal muscle. What else is the plus? In the fact that during this movement, there will be movement between the muscles, between the lumbar and the gluteal muscles in this position. Look again. That is, in order to put more load on the lower part of the diaphragm lumbar muscles, we need to either place both legs in such a way that they are wider than the shoulders, or leave one leg in the center and the other one also to the side, so that it is not in line with the shoulder, but slightly outward. You put the pillow under your buttock, and in this position you start to lift your leg. You may feel tension and fatigue in the area of the front part of the sacroiliac joint, because the lumbar pelvic muscle itself does not have receptors, and during work, you will not feel the work of the muscle itself, like, for example, when you do any other exercise. As you connect the paddles, you feel the tension building. Do an exercise on your bicep. You feel it getting tense here. The muscle here is structured in such a way that there are few receptors and tension is most often in the lower part of this muscle. That is, this is a workout that usually does not affect the muscle itself. You can also compare how this movement affects both the right and left iliopsoas muscles. This kind of workout is particularly good for relieving pain in the lower back, in the lower part of the spine, in the sacroiliac joint area. And now we need to make our muscles more elastic. But we still need to do the other side, the right one, right? So you lie down. Let's do it. So you can see, you also spread your legs wider. You put it under your buttock. You put a pillow. And from this position, you raise your leg here, here too. The amount you will adjust, you can start some even once may not work out. If it does not work out in this position, you bring it a little closer to the center. Find such a position where you will raise your leg, but at the same time, some effort will be felt. In general, the more you take your leg to the side here, the more load you will have on the lower part of the lumbar sacral muscle. Also earlier, we did another exercise with you, also for the lumbar sacral muscle. The load there is also significant. You can combine it with this exercise. This is when you do like this, put one leg on the other like this, also lay it down for strengthening and lift the lower leg. When your upper leg, you see, lies on the lower one, and you have to lift the additional weight. 
But the peculiarity is that, again, you train the whole muscle, not just its lower part. If your lower part is weak, then what is already working well will work more. Now, what to do so that our pelvis turned, the load from the waist went away, the lumbar sacral muscle became elastic again, stretched well during the step, then strained. Here is the stretching of this muscle. You can stretch in different ways. Most likely, you already know how to stretch. You can stretch like this, you can do it near the wall, you can keep this leg straight. We've done all of this with you. But now we can also stretch different parts of this muscle with you. Look, if we stretch with you in a standard position like this one, we will also stretch along the entire length of the muscle here. But suppose we want to stretch exactly this part with you. We train it with you and want to make the same muscle more elastic. We want to remove the sleeping process between the subscapularis and lumbar muscles. What should we do in this case? Here we put the back leg a little to the side, right here. That is, our standard stretching method is like this. And to stretch the lower part of the lumbar muscle, we move the leg here behind the shoulder line. And in this position, we start to stretch. Here exactly our lower back muscle and the lower part of the lumbar and all these spikes in between will also be stretched. Also, you can't just spread your legs wide. It won't work that way. That is, you start stretching the front leg first in the standard position, then leave the front leg where it usually stands, and this back leg you move aside so that it ends up behind the shoulder line. And in this way, you stretch the same tension, then reduce the tension. You can do it near the wall if it pulls strongly. You can do it like this in a slope. And the position of the foot if you turn the foot outward like this, then you will have more of these muscles, lumbar and subcostal, and more leading muscles stretching. Therefore, in this exercise, it is important that your nose still looks forward during the stretch of this muscle. You stretch from one side, you can also compare from the other side. Is there a difference between these movements? Well, friends, I hope now you have sufficiently strained this muscle, understood how to deal with it, understood that it requires your daily attention, that you need to maintain tone, maintain the strength of this muscle and give it both load and gradually stretch it. So friends, we watch, we write comments, a couple of likes as it seems we do sports, we help parents until new broadcasts.